YouTubers and welcome to another Doctor Who action figure review, the first in a hopefully a new series of reviews which I'm calling Throwback Thursday Reviews, in which I go back through the pantheon of 5 inch figures from yesteryear and take a little look at them, not only to review them but have a little chat about the nostalgia value. So hopefully these videos will come out either every Thursday or sort of every other Thursday, I've not quite decided yet, but there'll definitely be another one up next week. And the idea is to just pick and choose different figures throughout the line. Now, I did think about possibly starting right from the battle packs, moving on, but I thought that was just going to be a bit dull and you'll just get lots of 10th Doctor variants and stuff week after week. Boring. So instead, I thought, well, I'll just pick a figure at random. And what I would like to do is for you to give suggestions as to which figures I should review for next week. Well, which figure I should review next week. But for now, let's take a look at the Clockwork Droid, which came out in Series 2 back in 2007. Now, I am a fan of The Girl in the Fireplace, and when this figure was announced and the subsequent variants, I was very pleased. I thought the images looked fantastic. I thought this was a very cool and interesting figure. And when I got the actual toy, I was very pleased indeed. And it was one of my favorite figures. I, I have to say, I think it's an absolutely beautiful figure. And I think this was really at the point where character were really beginning to test out new things and looking at some of the other monsters that were sort of less likely to be made into a toy. Now, normally this is the segment where I would go through looking at the packaging, but obviously this figure hasn't been mint on card for many years. But what I can do, because I'm a lunatic and keep all these stupid things, I can show you the backing card to this figure. So as you can see at the top here, where it says Series 2, there is a sticker saying the Entertainer £7.95. Can you remember the days when you could get a figure in the 5 inch scale for that amount of money? By the time the line ended, they were going for like 10, 11, 12 pounds a piece. And this was eight quid, not even eight quid. Fantastic. A really nice package design. I was always really keen on this. I like the TARDIS in the background as the backing for the box. You get that nice insert piece at the front, which gives us a photograph of the character. And then on the back, it gives us a look at some of the other figures that were available in this wave. So we have the Cyberman with arm weapon, the gray variant of the Krillotane, the Ood. It also mentions that there are two styles available for the Clockwork Man, and we have the infamous werewolf figure, which I am sure I will get to at some point. Really cool. This is really bringing back a lot of nostalgia. I haven't got these cards out in a long time, so it's really fun to go back and look at how things were. So let's begin by taking a look at the articulation on this figure. So you can see there is some articulation there. It doesn't do a full 360 degree turn simply because of the hair that goes all the way down the front and down the back like that. So you can remove the mask. This is one of the really cool features about this figure, which I will go into a bit more later, but it's just to show you that the head beneath also turns. And I guess you could probably turn that 360 degrees, but the articulation on mine, it does feel a bit stiff, so I don't want to force it. Now, the shoulders here aren't ball jointed because this is the very early days of the figures. We didn't get that for a few years. So we just have standard swivel joints and the arms can move 360 degrees. Again, we don't have any bicep articulation. That was something that came later, but we do have elbow articulation, which allows the elbow to pivot up and down. Although, as you can see, the articulation on mine is so stiff that I'm having a lot of trouble with that. He also has articulation at the wrists. They can turn slightly. You probably could get them to turn 360 degrees. The problem here, though, is the frills on the cuff of his shirt, which are blocking the movement of the hand. So you can't move it completely. Let's see if we can try it on the other hand. Yes, this one has a bit more movement, as you can see. We have articulation at the waist. I'm just going to move the coat out of the way to see if I can get this to turn. Yep, there we go. So you have a slight bit of articulation. Again, this can actually do 360 degrees because the PVC here is actually very soft and there's actually a split up the side here to allow the extra movement. He has a T crotch joint hip, so that means the legs can move forward and they also move out to the side and they can also move backwards ever so slightly as well. And we also have articulation at the knee, which pivots back and forth. And then that's it. There's no more articulation other than that. So let's take a look at the details, beginning with that mask. 
Really nice sculpt. It looks very much like it does in the episode. Uh, it looks a bit, possibly a bit rounder in the cheeks than it does, or maybe a bit chinnier than it does in the episode, but we'll forgive that. It is a very nice sculpt, and there are some really beautiful paint details, very intricate paint details. That fine gold paint and pattern around the eyes and then the, the thin blue on the lips. There's no bleeds or anything like that. It's very well done. The hair is also very well sculpted. All those individual curls swooping down and those being sculpted in black with a grey wash over the top to give it that extra depth and texture. So let's take off the mask for now and let's look at the details of the head underneath. So the head here is molded in a transparent plastic. As you can see, we have this gold detail on the inside. Now, I'm not quite sure how they've done this. I can't quite figure out if the head looks to be like it was in two halves and then it was painted gold on the inside and then the halves clipped together. I'm not 100% sure on that. However it was done, it's very nice. Probably not to scale like in the episode. They've had to make the head slightly smaller so that the mask will fit on top, which I don't think it's a problem. I think it works very well, especially when you turn it on the side and you can see all of the little dials that have been sculpted on the inside to make it look like there are all those cogs and things that were working intricately, like in the episode. If we move down to the very luxurious costume, there's some really nice sculpting details here. You've got that cravat at the front, which has been painted white. There's some very nice sculpting details here, the way it folds and hangs off the torso. You can also see all the frills and the stitched pattern at the bottom. The coat has this very nice gold trim down the sides that's been sculpted and then painted. And this trim also continues onto other parts of the coat, such as on the cuffs, where there are also some gold buttons, and also on the pockets, where there are more gold buttons. And again, we have more of these details at the back and this very nice sculpt of the creases on the back of the coat. And then the PVC piece for the waistcoat also has more of this gold trim sculpted on. You can see there's a bit of paint rub down here, I'm not sure if that's from play or just from the way it was manufactured, it might just have been an error, but it's not too bad, but overall it looks very nice indeed. And if you move down, the trousers are a slightly darker blue to the rest of the costume. We have the white tights that have been painted on. And if we move down to the slightly heeled shoes, these are moulded in a black plastic with the gold buckles painted on. The figure also comes with this accessory, which is this little syringe device thing that they use to, I think, inject Madame de Pompadour. It's been a very long time since I've watched that episode. Again, nicely sculpted. You've got these intricate details of the circuitry and the cogs that have all been painted gold and the fine sculpting of the little needles at the end. And then there's a small hole just inside the sleeve of the droid's right arm. And that clicks in like so. I think mine is actually slightly loose but it works very well to give you the desired effect that the clockwork droids are ready to attack. So this is actually a very early figure in the line. This was only in its second year, and I think these figures came out very early in 2007. A really great figure from a story that I do enjoy. Some beautiful sculpting and paintwork here. It's quite simple because it is really just blue, white, and gold, but it's just so well done and so unusual. I think a really easy thing to do here in terms of customs is to remove the head. You could probably very easily remove the mask from the wig section. And if you just put a different head on and put the wig on top, you really could make some characters that were based in a period setting. So if you were doing animations and stuff, you really could do some period based Doctor Who stories, which is something that I really regret not doing but you probably can still get this on eBay. You might be able to find him quite cheap, loose. Uh, I'm not sure how much it would go for brand new in packaging. There was, of course, two variants of this figure. In this wave, there was a variant in a black coat, which was a slightly different variation, which I probably will come and look at at some point. And then later on, a few years later, or the year after or the year after that, they released a purple variant in a later series two wave. Thanks for watching this review, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I really did enjoy doing this. It's been really fun talking about such an old figure and looking at the old packaging. It's been really great fun, and I hope you've enjoyed it too, because I know a lot of you grew up with these toys like I did. So thank you for watching. Again, please leave your suggestions for next week's figure 
in the comment section below. I really love to see what people come up with and if I see something there that makes me go, oh yeah, that would be quite good to review because I've got so many of these damn things that it really is like picking a needle out of a haystack. It's just like, where do I go? What, what figure do I pick? This was really just a it dip. So thank you once again for watching this review, guys, and I hope to see you all again next week for another Throwback Thursday review.